Forbes, the holy grail of consumer refrigeration. TNW eats sorcery, eats science, eats the anti-toaster. Get ready to rethink the coolest appliance in your kitchen. What's that? It's like a microwave, but for cold? That's incredible. The impossible, of course, but totally incredible. And the idea is that it's almost like a microwave for cooling, so that eventually you could take something, cool it down, and enjoy it, and not have to have a standard refrigerator. Maybe making it more environmentally friendly. This thing is actually a countertop appliance that rapidly cools your beverage faster than you can say, I need a drink. CNET, it's ice cold. It has no ice. Digital trends. There's no chemicals or environmentally harmful refrigerants involved. You get a cold drink worry-free. I mean, surely no one's going to fall for this, right? Oh, it's raised about $200,000. The even dumber thing is I proposed almost exactly this, the uh, self-cooling water bottle as a spoof about three years ago. So let's do it. Let's make the world's first self-cooling water bottle. Because you know what would be really great? On those hot days, you know, when there's lots of sun, if there was a way that you could magically turn that hot day into a cold drink. But again and again, it's like a reverse microwave and it's totally amazing. And yes, I mean really, really impossible. The first thing you got to understand is what makes something hot or cold. Well, everything that you see is basically made up of atoms. Those atoms and molecules basically have a speed. And that speed is essentially their temperature. So if you take some air and look at it, it looks like this. Lots of molecules moving around, bumping into one another. And they have a sort of average speed, which essentially equates to its temperature. So if I heat it up, what you see is those molecules on average are moving faster. And if I cool it down, they're on average moving slower. That's all there is to temperature. So if you want to heat things up, you've got to make the molecules go faster somehow. And there's only a few ways that you can actually do that. You can either interact with the system somehow by, say, for instance, putting it in contact with some fast moving molecules and those actually impact on the gas molecules and make them move faster. So this is essentially what you're getting with a kettle. You've got a, you've got a heating element and you run electricity through, which makes the uh, atoms vibrate faster. And when those hit the water molecules, they transfer some of that energy across and boom, the water heats up. Alternatively, you can shine light on the object. And if that light is absorbed by the object, then that makes the atoms move faster. So if you're doing this with water, of course, visible light is a very poor choice because water is pretty transparent to visible light. That's not true, however, for the infrared. Water absorbs pretty much everything there. So a very quick description on the thermal cameras. They basically turn heat into images. And so I can actually go, the colder it is, the darker it appears. So the tip of my finger there, who's been dipped in water at some point is at 20 degrees, whereas the palm of my hand here is at nearly 30 degrees Celsius. And the computer obviously is a little warmer, and other parts of the screen which are fairly reflective, uh, you know, they're not giving true temperatures. The wall's probably giving a true temperature. If I scroll over to the wall, you'll see it's about eh, 18 and a half degrees. Cool, so down here, you've got the infrared camera. And in front of it, we've got some plastic cups, polyethylene. And the reason I know that polyethylene, or one of the reasons, is polyethylene is kind of transparent to the infrared, right? So if I put my fingers behind here, you'll actually be able to see my fingers through the polyethylene. Or if I stick my finger inside, you'll actually be able to see, you yeah. know, through polyethylene and that's actually true even if the polyethylene has dye in it like this one does so it's opaque to visible light but you can actually see through it in the infrared and that goes all the way around to the back you can still see through it now the reason we're not using glass here is because glass is completely opaque to the infrared so if i stick my finger on the inside there uh, yeah. If I put my fingers on the inside, you will see 
absolutely nothing. So let's be a bit more brave about this. And this is just carbon rod, an inanimate carbon rod, um, which I'm just going to heat up a little. Uh, this is just so it shows up a little better on the on the infrared. So there we go. There's a nice glowy red thing. If I stick it inside the glass, it completely vanishes. Right. So this is equivalent to black for the infrared. So I do this again with. You know, you actually sort of see it straight through. Now with water, uh, if I were to take this. Pouring water over a computer, what can possibly go wrong? Okay, so now I'm going to get a cup, which I can see through, and I'm just going to pour some water in there. Okay. And water is completely... Uh, uh, over, it, it is just completely black in the infrared. Okay, so I've changed it for a bowl of water here and you'll see that if I get my nice warm finger as I immerse it into the water, my finger basically vanishes almost immediately. So water, uh, it's essentially black. And just so we're clear what I mean when I say that it's black, and I mean it's black like it's cold on this visual representation because if I take some warm water and I pour this in here. Oops. You will see that the water is nice and bright. Let's just tweak the uh, the range of the camera there a little. Let's make it. There we go. Okay. So now you'll see again that my fingers will basically vanish instantly when they go into this. So what I say when I, I mean that it's black, I mean that it basically absorbs all the light that falls onto it. In visual terms, it's like this. So this is what water looks like in the infrared. It basically absorbs everything that falls onto it. So if you shine infrared light onto water, it absorbs all of it. And if you shine microwaves on the water, it'll absorb all of those too. So this is just a, a fancy way of getting energy into the water, of speeding up the water molecules, of heating up the water. So boom, that's all microwaves do. And the more light you shine on an object, the more you're going to heat up the water. Thing is, yeah, I can't do that for cooling. Now, sure, I can put the glass in contact with something cool. So here I've got some water and it's actually radiating energy out into the environment because it's hotter than the environment. And that's in the infrared, which is why you can only really see it with a thermal camera. So I can either wait for eternity for that to cool down. Well, not eternity, but a very long time for it to cool down. Or alternatively, I can just put it in contact with something cool. Like, say, for instance, a piece of ice. And instantly, <laughs> we'll see that, you know, when the hot water molecules collide with the ice molecules, uh, they slow down, they cool down. It cools down the water. But it's a fairly slow process. However, if I put a whisk in there, do you know, just speed up this process a little, what you'll find is it'll actually speed up the process of the cool down hugely. And, you know, my ice is gone. However, if we put a bigger piece in there, we'll probably get a more dramatic effect, okay? So. So this is by far the quickest way to actually cool down the drink, is to put a big chunk of ice in it. And as you can see, it's actually fairly effective, you know, in taking water from what was nice and warm uh, to fairly chilly. I mean, that water is now down to 16 degrees, 15, 14. I'm not even trying here, bear in mind. 12, 11, 10. Right, boom. <laughs> so that's almost as effective as this super efficient cooler 
in a few seconds. You see, with the microwave, if you want to heat it up faster, it's simple, you just shine more light on it. However, you can't do that with cooling because the black body radiation only depends on the temperature of the object. This is why there is no such thing as a reverse microwave because you can't shine something like negative energy light on something because there's no such thing as negative energy light. So how can it be like a microwave for cooling? Well, maybe it's just a faster way of cooling things. You know, I don't know, like calling, say, an ice bucket a reverse microwave. I mean, this can't just be like a <laughs> glorified ice bucket, a, an electric ice bucket, a $300 ice bucket. So you remember when I showed there's only one sensible way to rapidly cool down a hot object? and that's to get the fast moving molecules of the hot object to collide with slower moving objects. Well, that's basically what an ice bucket is doing. So cold water molecules are slowing down the can molecules, the atoms that make up the can, which are in turn slowing down the molecules in the drink, making it cooler. Now there's a problem here, mixing. If you've just got to wait for the molecules to bump into one another, the slow molecules to bump into the fast ones or vice versa, well, all of this is happening on a length scale of a billionth of a meter or so. So it takes a long time for that to go all the way through the liquid by conduction. Now, sure, you'll get some modest convective movements here, but what would really help is if you agitated the bottle somehow. It's basically this versus this. Now, oddly enough, that's already been invented. You place the can like that, close the lid, just to start that. This process should take one minute. You basically rotate the bottle or can while pumping water from an ice bucket reservoir over the drink. Again, hardly a reverse microwave. It's, it's a motorized ice bucket. And those are available for about $70. How many times have you had a guest bring over a bottle of wine without having a way to quickly chill it? We knew we could solve this problem. Then someone sent me this, the video of the elite tech reporter of the BBC being awestruck by this amazing glorified ice bucket. This machine is the opposite of a microwave. It's going to cool down things. This is just a prototype. will hold exactly one can of drink at the moment and has started to spin around in here. It's pure electricity based. There's no environmental harm. How much energy is this going to use to cool down one can of drink? So it will vary from like 100 watts, like up to 200 watts. I'm here at CES 2020 with a thermoelectric beverage cooler. Yes, a thermoelectric beverage cooler. Wow, 2020, a CES, the best of the technology in the world. And he's got a thermoelectric drinks cooler. You know, one of those Peltier effect devices where you pass electricity through it and one side gets hot and one side gets cold. I wonder what 2017 Thunderfoot has to say about that. Uh, turns out someone actually suggested on my Twitter feed that, you know, what about a self-cooling water bottle? Uh, you know, because a self-filling water bottle is crazy because it needs a vast amount of energy. Cooling water down doesn't take so much energy. So why not make a self-cooling water bottle? I'll um, device into our water bottle. So now we have a self-cooling water bottle. Let's see if it works. Good. So what you got there is the thermal camera, the display from the thermal camera in the background. Now the power supply down here, and you've got your bottle with water, the uh, heat sink for the quality device, fan, and right. So at the moment it's about 20 degrees or something is we're going to turn on the power like this we go boom there we go that's more like it okay so instantly yeah i can see that it's gotten cold here yeah and it's getting hot here so it's the same deal as i've had previously the heat sink you'll see is actually very reflective in the infrared right and that's the metal so what i've done is i've put some tape on this side and the tape isn't reflective in the infrared and it just shows up the real temperature of the heatsink. So instantly 
that's up at about 30 degrees this guy here and meanwhile yeah you see this you see the water the cold water running down the side of, of the bottle 15 degrees whereas the bulk of the water is at about 20 the water well this is this is burning up uh, to 30 odd degrees and that's not entirely unsurprising we're pulling in four to five amps at 12 volts which means this thing's sucking up easily 50 watts of power uh, which is actually quite a lot So that's actually pretty chilly. 10 degrees at the bottom, 12 at the top. And now for the ultimate test. Hmm, nice cool water. Yeah. I'm here at CES 2020 with a thermoelectric beverage cooler. Yes, a thermoelectric beverage cooler. Now at the time I did actually mutter these words. And yeah, there might even be some legitimate uses for this, like rapidly cooling wine to the right temperature. Which would make it super awkward, seeing as three years later, Juno comes up with the exact same idea. So did they steal my idea? Well, no. Firstly, the idea of using Peltier effect devices for cooling is decades old, and they have always suffered from numerous problems. The first is, the Peltier devices tend to be composed of massive heat sinks and fans. You said it's uh, space efficient. This is obviously a very big prototype because there's a huge heat sink in the back here. At least once they get up to any sensible size, the smaller ones tend to be yeah, more manageable. But they lack that oomph. And that's just to get rid of the heat generated. So one of the first reasons people don't like these things is because of the fan noise. Now on their Indiegogo page, you'll find there is zero mention of this thing containing any liquids. <laughs> you know, essentially being a mechanized ice bucket. But if you go to the frequently asked questions page, just above the bit that says no refunds, once the campaign has ended, you'll see that it does say that it uses water as a heat transfer agent. And seeing as we know that water freezes at zero degrees Celsius, you know that this thing will be less efficient than the motorized ice bucket, because if it does go down to that sort of temperature, their water will start to freeze. So it can at best match a machine like this. Juno is the world's fastest, most innovative rapid beverage chiller that will change the way you think about drinks. They also make a point of saying that it doesn't use any chemicals that are harmful to the environment. Because we are using the latest in thermoelectric innovation, Juno works without using environmentally harmful chemicals or traditional refrigerants, ushering in a new era of cooling technology. Uh, uh, sorry, is that meant to be an environmentally friendly sales pitch there? Allow me to educate you, son. Actually, let's do this rhetorically. Why do you think that all sensible sized fridges are compressor driven rather than using Peltier effect devices. I'll give you a clue. It's because compressor driven fridges are massively more energy efficient than Peltier effect devices. So we built the latest technology in thermoelectric cooling into Juno. So let's add a reality check to this. Would you like to cool something and have it take four times as much energy as a conventional cooler? Why not consider our great new electric ice bucket water chiller? But wait, I hear you ask, can't I get this thing to consume more power needlessly? Why, yes, you can. You can leave this device on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. With its always on matrix technology, Juno is ready to chill whenever you are. And not of course with the insulation that you would get on a A-rated energy efficient fridge but with skinny, scrawny insulation and with all the extra power consumption that that entails, just as you could be bothered away a few minutes by putting your drinks in the fridge. Well, I've got good news for you. For $300, we can 
give you that product. <coughs> no refunds. Excellent question. Why do you want to keep all the drink in the fridge and consume electricity? We are not using it. So you can actually keep all those drinks at the room temperature and cool it when you need it. It's a space efficient, energy efficient. Amazing. Every word of what you just said was wrong. Further, the thing is full of water the whole time. Standing water, which sooner or later will start to grow things. Yeah, just the sort of thing that you want to immerse your drinks in before drinking them. Alternatively, if you don't run it 24 hours a day, you know, sucking up all that needless power, then it will take as long to cool down as just putting your bottle of wine in the fridge or an ice bucket. But what about all those rave reviews? Well, oddly enough, if you scroll down to the comments on some of those articles, this expert reporting by the mainstream technical media on these reverse microwaves, you get comments like this. Uh, thermoelectric coolers are effective, but really inefficient. Using a commercial calculator for a TC efficiency, I show that a Peltier cooling module to cool 60 degree beverage to 32 at a rate of one liter per minute will use over 1,700 watts of power at 230 volts. They also need to dissipate all of the heat being removed somewhere. So lightly, the ambient temperature about the device is likely to rise pretty sharply. Not a huge deal in a commercial location, but at a home, it's going to drive up the AC costs considerably. I've been playing with Peltiers for about 20 years. They're incredibly inefficient. It's a neat idea and one that's been done before and will provide decent enough results. But the trade-off is a costly device with massive waste heat, which serves at best a dubious niche. For smaller drinks, whiskey stones are a thing. For larger ones, like for wine bottles, a cheaper option is planning to have it chilled already. And maybe the prize for the best comment goes to Dr. Emilio. Gizmodo. Almonds are environmentally evil, but I love my Peltier cooler because I forgot to put a bottle of wine in the fridge. You'll also find that many of these articles reference that this is the, the amazing company that invented the smartwatch that never needed charging, that charged entirely from your own body heat. Unless, of course, it was summer, in which case it would just stop charging. But uh, other than that, it would never need charging. Now, some time ago, Dave from EEV Blogs went through this and basically showed that the whole thing was just a gimmick. Before you go and say, oh, I've got some sort of calculation wrong, there they have basically admitted that there's nothing wrong with my calculations. I did these on the forum previously. They were involved in discussions. I asked them to provide their data. They wouldn't do it. They said they'd provide it to me privately. <laughs> Come on, give me a break, right? The numbers add up. They have confirmed them and, well, you might as well just stick a bloody battery in the thing because the thermoelectric generator gimmick. I mean, this is pretty basic stuff that anyone can do and these guys know it. They know that it's a gimmick and they want to get, you know, funding for researching further uh, products that they want to do. But hey, they're taking people's money for this smartwatch. People are going, wow, it never needs to change a battery when they don't realise you could have just done that anyway with a primary cell. So yeah, but they won't tell you that because then it wouldn't sell. And whilst they do kind of work, yeah, the reviews are fairly clear that it's a lackluster smartwatch with a premium rate price. Plus the thing is an absolute brick to wear. And while there are some happy reviews, about 50% of the comments on their Indiegogo, which raised over $2 million, look like this. Just received mine today. Setup was easy and quick, but step counter is not working. I tried walking, running, jumping, but it doesn't count at all. Kindly advise. Lux edition, still no shipping information. Refund, received it less than a month ago. After yesterday, completed the SW update. Today, the watch completely blacked out once I started an outdoor activity. The same occurred with the Power Watch 1, but I decided to let it go since the number two was about to be released. I've tried the reboot setup, but the watch remains completely off. Please refund. So that's the amazing story of the uh, 
awesome reverse microwave. And if you enjoyed that, drop a like on this video. And if you don't want to miss out on more videos like this, make sure you hit the notification bell. And if you really want to support this channel, you can do it directly via Patreon. And I'll leave the links below. And uh, thanks for watching.